in this video i will be discussing 30 most important mcq and six subjective question from unit 4 so let's get started first question which of the following is the primary service provided by the network layer to the transport layer option a e-direct detection b packet routing c data encryption d data compression so the option b packet routing is correct option in classful addressing how many bits are used for the host portion in class b network 8 16 24 32 so the option number b 16 bits is correct uh, what is the subnet mask for a slash 26 network so when we talk about slash 26 network it means the first 26 bits are reserved for network and the remaining bits are for devices or host now if if we write it look like this in the first section the first three section or octets are, are all ones in binary which equal to 255 in decimal in fourth section the first two bits are one and the remaining six are zero which is equal to 192 in decimal so the correct option is b 255.255.255.255.192 after calculating this uh, 192 is giving so the correct option is b 192 now question number four which of the following is true for a class list addressing so the option number a fixed size block for address are allocated b address are divided into abc class c idr allow efficient ip address allocation option d c subnet mask are not used so the option number c is correct what is the primary difference between subnetting and supernetting a subnetting combined network and supernetting divided subnetting divide network and subnetting combined them. so the option number b is correct so in question number 6, an organization given the block 192.168.1.0 slash 25. What is the number of address in this block? So the number of address is equal to 2 to the power 2 to, 2 to the power host bit. So in this question, 32 minus 25 that is 7. So 7 is the host bit. So 2 to the power 7 that is 128. So the correct option is 128. So the answer B is correct. And now, which layer of the OSI model is, is responsible for logical address and routing? So the option number C, that is network layer, is correct answer. Now, moving to our next question, which of the following is not a characteristic of IPv6 header? Option A, large address space. B, simplify header format. C, built-in support for QoS. D, uses broadcast communication. So the option number D is correct also. Now, question number nine. Which field in the IPv4 header consume ensure no packet circulate independently in the network? So the option number D is correct. Time to leave. What is the primary disadvantage of IPv6 over IPv4? So the option number C is correct. Large address space. Which IP address is reserved for loop back testing? So the I 127.0.0.1 is reserved for loop back testing. So the option number B is correct. What is the primary purpose of next header field in IPv6? Uh, specify the next protocol layer. So the option number B is correct. Which type of address is used to identify a group of device on a network? So the option number B is multicast. It's true. What is the network ID of the IP address 172.16.4.1 with a subnet mask of Class C that is 255.255.255.0. So the option number B is correct. Network ID of this is 170D. Now, question number 15. What is the broadcast address for the network 10.0.0.0 slash 28? So the option num um, number A that is 10.0.0.15 is correct. Which IPv6 address is reserved for loopback? In this question, it is reserved for loopback testing in IPv6. In IPv4, we use 127.0.0.0, and in IPv6, we use option number A for loopback. In question number 17, which routing method allow a router to dynamically update its routing table? So the option number C is correct: dynamic routing. In question number 18, 
a company assigned an IP address block of 192.168.10.0.24 then they need to divide it into four equal size subnet what are the valid subnet lenses after uh, finding or calculating option number a is correct so the correct answer is a you can solve this question in your copy because it's it's it's, it's very important for your etv preparation question number 19 what does cid and notation 192.168.1.0.10.0.24 indicate so option number a is correct what is the maximum number of subnet possible with a slash 27 subnet mark so the correct answer is option number b we discussed this question this type of question in previous so you can uh, refer to that question number for your under understanding 20 num 21 which field in ipv4 header is used to detect error in the packet header so the option number c is correct header checksum detect the header e detect error in packet header which ip address range is reserved for private network so this is the most important question for your etp this is the sum of ip ranges private network ranges is reserved for private network this is some ip ranges reserved for private network so you can see it so the option number d is correct all of them so question number 23 which of the following is not a part of ipv ip header in ipv4 so the correct option is c next hope address how does the network layer identify devices on a network so the option number b is correct ip address what is the purpose of hope limit field in ipv6 so the option number b is correct prevent routing clue what is the first step in the subnetting so the first step of subnetting is determine the number of subnet required so the option number b is correct 27 number which field in ipv4 header specify the length of the data portion of a packet so the option number a is correct total length in ipv uh, in ip address with all host bit set to zero represent network id this is very simple in Question number 29. IPv6, which address is used to communicate with all nodes on the link? So the option number A is correct. Now, now this is the last question of the MCQs. What does CIDR allow in the terms of IP addressing? So the option number B is correct. Variable length submit mask. Now we are going moving to our next part. So subjective question. First objective question is explain with an example of concept of subnetting and supernetting. Calculate the subnet mask range and IP address for a network with a 26 slash 26 prefix. In this question, I am just showing you question and answer of the subjective question so you can see it and memorize. So the first part is this, and in next part. This is the question number second. Explain the concept of IP addressing and discuss the difference between classful and classless addressing. So first, first of all, we are discussing the IP, what is an IP, and then after classful addressing, classless addressing, and some of the key difference between classful and classless addressing. So, in question number third, explain the concept of IP fragmentation and how does the ip header handle fragmentation and disassembly so the first we de define ip fragmentation after that how ip handle fragmentation and various process and step of fragmentation like fragmentation process ip header field for fragmentation disassembly process and in next section question number 4 illustrate the process of cida a and in b what is the role of network layer in packet forwarding? So, first of all, we describe, describe the CIDR method allocating, and after that, we are going to discuss. We are writing some of the steps of in CIDR. In next, 
in part b the role of network layer in packet forwarding so first we, we write routing decision packet forwarding encapsulation fragmentation and assembly error handling these are the some important uh, role of network layer, layer in packet forwarding so we can write in point wise in next question i'm going to next question explain the key design issue of the network layer so these are the some key design issue of network layer addressing routing packet forwarding fragmentation disassembling error handling you can see in part b what are different types of delay network layer performance illustrate with example so types of delay these are the some types of delay trans for propagation delay transmission de delay processing delay queuing delay into in delay you can write in point wise or any in question number six our last question we are going to describe the structure of ipv4 and ipv6 header and explaining the significance of each field in both ipv4 and ipv6 header so first of all uh, we are going to discuss the ipv4 part in this first of all describe ipv4 and after that we are drawing a diagram and after that we are writing or about the each field in app diagram like version types of service total length like version indicate the ip vertical version types of service total length we are we means describe each and every field of ipv4 in ipv6 first of all define ipv6 header format after that we are going to design a diagram and after diagram describe all the field 